Hey Robbie, why do we have a $1,500 charge on our card from eBay? Fatality. What's up, YouTube fam? Robbie C here. This week, we are back with episode three of our Building the Bag series, where I'm going through tons of Innova molds, trying to test out what actually works for my game and my skill set so that I can achieve the most success on the course. I've got a few guiding principles that I'm using, and my hope is that you can use these same principles to help make your bag a little more efficient and effective. Before we dive into testing our discs for the day, I have to make sure to thank the sponsor for this series, OTB Discs. Once we start getting into these higher speed discs, there are little variances within the same mold. Some T-Birds are pretty domey. Some T-Birds are board flat. One of my favorite parts about OTB discs is that they give you as much info as possible so that you can get as close to knowing exactly what you're buying without even being there to test it out. So if you wanna make the best decision for purchasing discs and support the channel, feel free to head over to otbdiscs.com and use code RCDiscGolf at checkout to save yourself on some free shipping. So without further ado, let's head to the field. For me, fairway drivers come out for most things around 300 to 300. 50 feet. Within those distances, I have five target areas I want to be able to get a disc to. Now, these target areas are going to look very similar to the lines of the mid-range video. However, I want my fairway drivers to be very flexible so that I can get to those areas in a variety of ways. For instance, just because I'm trying to go hard to the right doesn't mean that I'm going to throw a super understable disc on a backhand. I want to have that option in case the disc needs to come in high and then settle on that right point, but I also need something super overstable in case I need to throw something low and let it flare up and around the corner in case there's like a low ceiling. And this is why I'm looking at landing zones rather than specific lines. I want my fairway drivers to do one of two things. I either want them to be consistently extreme in one fashion or another, or I want them to be extremely workable and neutral. These two guidelines along with our target areas is going to separate us into three categories for our fairway drivers. Let's start with the understable options first. There is a common staple of the end of a line that many people expect to be in this video, and it's a leopard. In the mid-range video, we talked about subconscious confidence. However, if you've had a bad experience with a certain mold, then subconscious confidence does the exact opposite. That factor may seem really silly to lots of people, but I truly believe that it impacts our ability to throw certain molds. A couple years ago, I was trying to build out my bag a little bit, and so for Christmas, I asked for a Wraith, a T-Bird, and a Leopard 3. But that specific Leopard 3, I don't know what was wrong with it, but I have thrown tilts that felt less stable than that Leopard 3. Also willing to admit that at that time, my form was pretty atrocious, so I was wasn't helping the disc do its job. I have seen so many people throw leopards and leopard threes well, but for me, it's just not gonna work. So I didn't even really give it a try. Another mold I was super anxious to try was the Roadrunner. I've heard great things about the Roadrunner and I'm a big Greg Barsby fan. So I figured why not give this a try? I thought it was great for a super understable flyer. But I felt like I had to be too touchy with the angles to get an accurate flight out of it. So that understable slot really came down to two molds for me, the Sidewinder and the Valkyrie. To test these in comparison, I threw three of each mold. There was three tests I was looking at for this mold. The first was its ability to sustain a long hyzer flip. So often in long wooded shots, I need this slot to step up and allow me to throw a hyzer flip. And I want to know that it's going to hold that hyzer flip for a significant amount of time without either completely turning over or fading out too early. I also wanted to make sure the disc in the slot could hold an anhyzer if I released it flat without immediately turning into a roller. This disc is also going to be my massive uphill thrower because I love throwing understable discs uphill. When looking at these two, it was pretty neck and neck. One was better on the hyzer flip and the other held that anhyzer much easier. So it came down to that third factor, which was the I crushed it factor. Feels like there are times when you release the disc comes out so perfect and you think to yourself, is this what it feels like to be Paul McBeth? The better we get, the more often that moment happens. And I wanted to see what happened when I threw these molds and I got all of it. When I felt like I threw the Valkyrie as best I could, the result was consistent and the same. And so for that reason, we're heading to Valhalla and grabbing a Valkyrie. For the neutral slot, it was fairly easy. If you're an Innova player, it's either T-Birds or Eagles. I grabbed both and started throwing them. For me, when I throw T-Birds, they do one of two things. They are either consistently overstable or consistently really straight. There is really no middle ground, not only based on the flight numbers, but my feel of throwing an Eagle. An Eagle is just a more extreme T-Bird. When beat in, it's more understable than a T-Bird, which allows it to fly straight. And when it's new, it flies more overstable than a T-Bird. The workability of that is exactly what I'm looking for, because once again, I want to 
have something that is extremely workable to get me to as many of those landing zones as possible. So I know the T-Bird is a classic, but it's just not gonna make it in the bag for me. Bringing us to our final option, the one I know you've all been waiting for, the overstable slot. Now I have to be honest, when I thought about my end of a bag, there was one mold I knew I wouldn't be able to throw and it was probably the hardest mold for me to let go of. That is the Dynamic Disc Felon. This disc has been my go-to forehand disc for over a year and a half. This felon would fly straight for about 300 feet and then start fading, just like you would expect out of a super overstable fairway driver. The Heiser is the most reliable shot in the game and I wanted to find an end of a mold that could do exactly that. The key was trying to keep that subconscious confidence of finding the same mold in different plastics. As for discs in the end of a lineup that are currently in production, there's two options, the Invictus and the Firebird. The Firebird is the prototype for all of these super overstable fairway drivers, so I had to give it a try. And most every single Firebird that I've ever thrown before does exactly what you think it would do. The moment it comes out of your hand, it is trying to fade and trying to get on whatever direction it's naturally supposed to go. While this is extremely reliable, it doesn't give me the option that that Fusion Felon was giving me. I tried a Star Firebird and some worked and some didn't. So I thought maybe the Firebird isn't the mold for me and I moved on to the Invictus. Throwing a Champion Invictus felt so good. I knew that it was reliably overstable. It gave me some big flair on either a backhand or a forehand and I thought all I need is for the Star Invictus to be a little less stable version of this and bada boom bada bang, we have a winner. Yet when I threw the Star Invictus, I noticed that it was still crazy overstable. When Ricky Wysocki throws a Star Invictus, I think to myself, wow, it flies really straight with a reliable fade at the end. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But here's the deal. I'm not Ricky Wysocki and neither are you. Unless you are actually Ricky Wysocki and then thank you for watching. I saw the hole, I saw the need, and I kept asking what disc is going to fill that slot. And then I looked in the mirror and said, Robbie, you've been so adamant about this guiding principle of only throwing readily available discs. But you also need to make sure that you have the right discs in your bag so that you can best succeed on the course. The internet is going to roast you. Friends might disown you, but you could possibly get some birdies. So we hunted down the ultimate collector's disc, a Sexton Firebird. I'll be 100% transparent. I didn't want to like it. I wanted to hate it. I wanted it to come out of my hands and immediately start fading right so I could say, ha ha ha, the Sexton Firebird is totally not worth it but I was wrong. The Sexton Firebird came out of my hand, flew incredibly straight, and still had a fantastic and reliable fade at the end. I truly wanted to hate it, but I had to come to a couple realizations. They're Frisbees and they're meant to be thrown. Is any disc worth the amount of money that you have to pay to get your hands on a 2015 Sexton Firebird? As a thrower, absolutely not. But as a collector's item, well, that's an entirely different conversation. They have printed more Sextons this year than any other year, and this gives us a fantastic opportunity for you to try a Sexton Firebird. Part of that $25 cost is because proceeds go straight to Nate Sexton himself. And I'm down to support some pros. So to answer the question, do I think the Sexton Firebird is overhyped? No, I think it does exactly what it's supposed to in filling that hole in the Innova lineup. If you have to throw all Innova or you want to throw all Innova, I do believe a Sexton Firebird could fill a necessary hole in your bag. But if you don't have to throw all Innova or you don't want to throw all Innova, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. And I would suggest throwing a Dynamic Disc Felon. Whew, we've covered so many hot takes in this video. Where does that leave us for our bag? For our understable option, we're going with the Star Valkyrie. For the neutral slot, we're bagging one mold and two plastics. That's gonna be two eagles. Our first is gonna be in the champion plastic. The second is this Star Eagle. And yes, I know it's a tour series, but the infused eagles fly just the same. But once again, I love supporting pros and Barsby is a really great guy. Next is the overstable side of things. And you guessed it, we're bagging Firebirds. The first is our Sexton Firebird. And we're also bagging a champion Firebird, almost more of a utility slot. I forgot to mention a bonus slot in our fairways. And that is the Thunder. Sometimes when I'm looking for a little bit more distance, the Champion Thunderbird has about the same flight as my Overstable Eagle. It just goes about 30 to 40 feet farther. With these four molds, I feel extremely comfortable getting some really solid distance with a ton of control to hit any of my desired landing zones. So what do you think about these choices? Do you agree with my thoughts on the Sexton Firebird or disagree? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you are a Sexton Firebird thrower, let me know in the comments below. What's your favorite year to throw and why? Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have an incredible week and that you make some amazing choices when it comes to your fairways. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.